Oh yeah, copies. Yeah, you did win the raffle. So by present day in this game, they mean they mean 1993. Just just remember that. If, if they, if they, uh, if they, if this was present day, I would think they'd all be like, uh, you know, I don't know if there'd be an opera going on first off. And secondly, they'd probably be wearing masks and social distancing like, um, responsible opera going individuals. As the opera begins, no one considers the possibility that the composer himself might also attend the performance. You got a haircut. You changed off your 13 month old beard. Nice. After all, his skeleton was found deep below the theater in the catacombs over a hundred years ago. Or was it? Uh, my posture's not that great either. I don't know if it is FMV. I don't know if you call it FMV or, uh, we'll find out when we actually play it. Yeah, I like how she just looks up and just screams as the thing is falling toward her instead of like, ah, I'm gonna dodge out of the way or something like that. I guess, I guess that was just a moment of panic. Okay, so we're gonna hit the play button. We're gonna start the game and the timer. Oh, we get to pick a difficulty level. Well, we're gonna pick challenging, of course. Ah, Monsieur Montan, there you are. Step down here, please. I wish to speak with you. Walk to seats. Wait, who am I? Oh, this is me. I'm up here. Okay. As manager of the opera, I just wanted to thank you, monsieur. We were so fortunate that you were attending the premiere tonight. 
Without your assistance in caring for the victims and dealing with the ensuing chaos, the situation would have been much worse. <laughs> I thank you for all you That's have done, valid. It is not every detective with the Surete who is also a patron of the opera. I do hope you will continue to investigate this horrible tragedy. I am afraid we have only just begun. Let us discuss how to proceed. Okay. Oh, I have options. Yes, I'm listening. Yes, I'm listening, Monsieur Brie. This tragedy disturbs me a great deal. I can understand how upset you are about this. I can understand how upset you are about this. Upset? For heaven's sake, there's a madman loose. He might strike again at any moment. Who do you suggest I speak with? No, whom? Whom? Find Charles, our stage manager. He should be able to help you. Where do I find him? Where can I find Charles? You should be able to find him in the stage left wing at his post. How do I get around the theater? Go east into the orchestra pit and then into the trap room. That should lead you backstage. Charles can direct you from there. What do you want me to do then, monsieur? I would like you to explore the theater. Talk to people you see. Find out where this madman is hiding. Good lord, man, there were people murdered tonight. And I don't think this lunatic is going to stop there. Please, I ask you, Raul, as a friend. See what you can find out. I shall be in my office shortly. Come find me and give me a report on your progress. Then I'll give you further instruction. Good luck. Tell me everything you know about Wait, this. Wait, who am I? There are a lot of lunatics in Paris. I firmly believe that this is a copycat crime. Are you sure you have no suspects at the opera? Oh, I have to click every time I, I go. I trust my staff implicitly. Our stage manager has confirmed that all employees were at their positions when the crime occurred. I have sent everyone home. <laughs> it does I kind of sound you can like that. I return to the theater tomorrow should you wish to question anyone who is not here now. What do you mean by copycat crime? Why, do you not see? This is precisely the same crime committed by the Phantom of the Opera in 1881. Someone is trying to make us think that the Phantom has returned. Or has he? Tell me more about the Tell Phantom. Tell me more about the Phantom. Click. His name was Eric. He lived below the opera while the thing was being built. He caused a lot of havoc because he was in love with an ingenue named Christine Day. Some of his things were found at the turn of the century, so he must have died sometime between 1881 and 1900. Christine Day? Any relation to tonight's Christine star? Christine Day? Any relation to tonight's star? You mean Christine Florent? No, I do not think so. What things were found? His mask, the original score to his opera, Don Juan Triumphant, and a wedding ring, supposedly the one he originally gave to Christine Day. She returned it to him before she disappeared with her lover, the Vicomte de Chaunay. His name was Raoul too, by the way. Where are these artifacts now? Where are these now? artifacts now? We have kept them on display in the opera library for years. Please feel free to go see them. There are some other documents in the library which will give you some information on the Phantom. How were these artifacts found? Some excavation was performed in the catacombs around the turn of the century. The ruins of a strange abode were found. A skeleton was discovered within, along with the artifacts. It is believed that this is the body of Eric, but nobody has ever really proved it.
Until later, Monsieur Brie. Monsieur Brie. I shall see you soon, Raoul. There now I have verbs. Look, take, push, open, put, talk to, give, pull, throw, and close. And we can go. Let's look at the chandelier. Oh, it's not going to read these to us. The crumpled, ornate chandelier looks like a dead animal lying on top of the seat. You're amazed that even more people were not hurt in the mishap. All right, let's go this way. The prompters peer through this opening from the trap room below so that they can prompt the actors if they forget a line. I did not know that was a thing. The music stands are identical, empty, and made of thin black metal. Music stands have remained relatively unchanged for a century. That I do believe. These chairs are used by the orchestra members. It seems to you that they might be a bit hard on the posh posterior during a long opera. It does seem that way. All right, now we're going in here. To the door. Oh, I found them. Game over? Is it game over now? Did I do it? Did I solve the mystery? I think we have to Scooby-Doo him, though. I think we have to catch him so we can take his mask off. And the real... The real killer is... The guy that we talked to at the beginning of the game? Monsieur Bree? But why? This is an old empty carton which once held some lightning cable, lighting cable. I have no inventory either. So just just a note. Can we just go through the door? The door is locked. Let's um, open the door, which isn't going to work. Let's um, talk to the door. The conversation would be decidedly one-sided. Indeed, it would be. Let's look at the pipe. It's obviously a water pipe, probably connected to the lavatories in the building of the famous, in the building to the famous Paris sewage system underground. This is an old discarded set piece. You know that it is part of what of what scenic designers call a unit set. A garbage can. Let's look at that. Yes, it's just a bit of refuse inside some stagehands' weak old lunch wrappings. Okay. 
A lever. There's a lever. Let's pull the lever. Hey, it's the trapdoor. Oh, we need to. So we can get up, go up there. Okay. So we can we can pull this. I mean, that's really pushing it, but okay. It's valid, I suppose. Now we can go up here. How do we save? We hit escape. Okay. Interface is easy. Room fade is smooth. Panning is smooth. Interface is easy. Standard, easy, standard. Okay. Okay. And then we've got... Um, the uh check score we've we got four points we got four points he did tell us to use the trap door Where can I go from here? Oh, it, it, it moves. Okay. What's this? What's this? A color frame is a piece of hardware that's, that slides into a slot at the front of a lighting instrument. There's a yellow colored gel on this one. Let's, let's, uh, can we, can we take it? Take. Yoink! A color frame is a piece of hardware. Well, they just said that. Okay. So this basically makes a light yellow. It's a yellow filter, right? There's a headset. Let's check, let's check that out. This is an ordinary headset, which a stage manager or a stagehand uses to communicate with each with other members of the stage crew during a performance. Can we use it? Let's take it. Can we take it? It is the property of the Paris Opera House. It would not be much of use to you anyway. I guess that would be a no. Purchase lines. What's that? These are hemp ropes running from the top of the arbor up and over the head block, down through a rope lock at the fly gallery, under a take-up block at or below the stage floor, and up to the bottom of the arbor. They are pulled to change the position of the attached scenery. They do look nice, I agree. Walk across in one. You know that in one is the first slot upstage for the um, proscenium arch from which actors can enter the stage. Okay, I, I know nothing about this. We're getting we're getting we're getting information on stages called the eye for short. Is that I? No, that's not I. I don't know how to pronounce CYC. CYC. Psych. Cyclorama is a large piece of scenery which defines the back of the stage setting. It is usually made of a large dark curtain as it is today. Sometimes it is colored blue to simulate a sky. You know that in two is the second slot up stage of the proscenium arch from which uh, actors can enter the stage. From here, you can walk behind the cyclorama. Wow. Who knew this was going to be an educational game, too? Learning all the things. Here's a door. 
a random door, a plant prop, a sandbag, a big prop, a crate. Okay, well, let's just go through the door. What the heck? It's just like a big staircase. Let's go up the stairs, I guess. Look at us. We're just like... Oh, man. If only there was a freaking elevator. We don't look burnt. We don't look like we're too happy about climbing the stairs. Let's go in this door. Hey, we found a thing. It's a trash bucket. Let's look at it. Insignificant waste bucket. Let's look at the bulletin board. The bulletin board is cluttered with several notices, mostly crew calls, uh, casting announcements, rehearsal schedules, and other theater-related business. Okay, let's go through the open door. Let's see what's in here. Hey, it's a person. It's the first person we've seen other than whoever was at the beginning. I can't remember his name now. Let's talk to you. Talk to woman. Hello, woman. Bonjour, monsieur. Have a seat while I practice. Okay. I will, I guess. I am a detective. I am a detective. Bonjour. I am Detective Raoul Monton. I am Julie Geary. What can I do for you? What are your thoughts regarding the Chandelier tragedy? Yes, what are your thoughts? I am glad you asked. It was the Opera Ghost. He has returned. I always knew he would. Ah! Boogeyman! How do you know it's the ghost? Mm. Because quick. I saw him. Where and when did you see him? Where and when did you see him? It was two nights ago. I was coming out of my dressing room and I saw him on the staircase. He turned to me, then quickly ran up the stairs. I was too frightened to follow. What did he look like? What did he look like? He was dressed formally, but his clothes were rather old-fashioned, of the kind they wore during his day. He had on a cape and was carrying a cane. He was not wearing a mask. I only caught a glimpse of his face, for it was very dark. It looked like a skull. Why? Oh. Why do you say that you always knew he would return? That's a good question. Because I have dreamt about it. I have some of the powers that my great-grandmother had, you see. Your great-grandmother, please Your great -grandmother. enlighten me. Please, enlighten me. Madame Geary worked at the opera as what today we would call an usher. She looked after the boxes. She was in charge of the Phantom's personal box. His personal box? His personal box. Go on, please. It was box five. He had ordered the manager of the opera to never sell the box as it was his. He would attend the opera in that box, but no one knew how he got into it. He certainly didn't go through the door. Didn't your great-grandmother see him in the box? Never. She never tried to see him. She was a little afraid of him despite his kindness. But my mother says that great-grandmother told her that box five had some kind of trick in it. I think we need to write this down. Box five. Well, let's hear more about your dreams. Tell me about your dreams. I see him in the haze of darkness and shadows. He emerges. He has a woman with him dressed in white. But I cannot see her face. She is wearing a mask. I think I know who she might be, though. 
And who do you think she is? Who do you think she is? The Phantom was in love with a singer named Christine Day. It could be her. That's true. But I have a theory that it might be Christine Florent. There is some kind of connection between the two. Not only do they look alike, but they are both gifted singers. Perhaps that is why the ghost has returned here and now, because of her. Okay, I'm gonna write this down. Between Day and uh, Florent. Okay, so she thinks it's a connection. Tell me more about Madame Geary. Tell me more about Madame Geary. To put it bluntly, she was a psychic. She communicated with the Phantom without ever seeing him or speaking to him directly. She also wrote a book about him, which you can find in the Opera Library. Communicated with him? Yes. He would leave her instructions in his box. But she almost always knew beforehand what he wanted and provided it. The ghost tipped her very well. He was good to her. Tell me about the book. The book? She wrote it around the turn of the century, after the Phantom's supposed death. She became something of an authority on the man. If you haven't read it, you probably should. Is this the book that came with the game? I'm curious. Like there was a there was a book that came with the game. I'm wondering if that is the is the book that they're talking about. Tell me a little about yourself. Well, I am a dancer with the ballet corps. I am taking acting lessons and hope to become a prima donna like Christine Florent. How long have you been associated with the opera? <laughs> it was called the manual. There's actually another book that came with the game that isn't the manual. My family has been with the opera all the way back to my great-grandmother. My mother was a costume seamstress. My grandmother was in the ballet like me. My great-grandmother worked for the public sector of the opera. How do you know Clis Christine Florent well? Do you know Christine Florent well? She's very sweet, but she tends to keep to herself, like most prima donnas. I believe that she knows more about this chandelier incident than she lets on. What do you think she knows? When I mentioned that I saw the opera ghost the other day, she turned quite pale and said not to spread such rumors. Okay. We gotta write that down. Okay. Merci. I shall speak with you later. Adieu. Adieu, monsieur. Adieu. So let me look at the book. I'm, I'm gonna look at the book that came with the manual, or with this game. So there's a book called Eric, the Phantom of the Opera. And let's see who wrote it. Oh, it is Madame Geary. So, yeah, it's this book that they're talking about. So it is, it's not super long, really. It's like, it's 11 pages and there's a significant amount of pictures in there. Um, so this book might have a lot of hints. I mean, they urged us to read it, so. And it says, I can, I can, I can show you all. Yeah, this is the book right here. So Eric, the Phantom of the Opera by Madame Geary. Editor's note. The following manuscript was found in Madame Geary's dress, dressing table drawer after her death in 1918. Her daughter, Mary Geary, graciously donated it to this publisher.
So this is the book. The book. We should probably keep it up for reference. This is a story about his early years. His history. Hey, thanks for the host, Lars. And here's the information about Christine and him. Okay, following the initial excavation, had ammunition with, with which to condition Christine to believing in him. Die, die, sure day promised Christine that, or Monsieur Day promised Christine that. He would continue her musical education even after his death um, by providing an angel as a tutor. Eric became her father's angel of music. We're doing okay. Or I'm doing okay. Um, we, we just started uh, Return of the Phantom. You ventriloquism in the secret passages in the opera. Eric spoke and sang to Christine through her dressing room mirror. Interesting. Christine, under the Phantom's hypnotic spell, became convinced that her tutor was indeed this angel of music and resolved to keep it her secret. Things became more complicated after a young, another young man was interested in Christine Day as well. He, he was Raoul, which is my name, the younger brother of... Comte, deeply smitten by her, Monsieur de Chagne, discovered early in the in on that something was not quite right with Christine. While sitting outside her dressing room, he over once overheard the Phantom telling Christine that she must love him. When eventually the girl emerged from her room, Raoul inspected the the unlocked dressing quarters and found it empty. Raoul met Christine when they were both children. When, when they were both children, she and her father visited Paris, and the two children met on the beach. Christine's scarf blew out to sea, and the boy Raoul retrieved it. Thereafter, they played every day until the elder uh, and his daughter returned to Scandinavia. Soon after, Raoul's suspicions had been occurred, which no one seems to confirm. But the story goes that Raoul followed Christine to visit her father's grave. He serotypically stayed. In the shadows, the girl took the walk to the cemetery. There, in the dead of night, Raoul saw the so-called angel of music appear before Christine. The band was playing a violin, and the music was truly perfect. Raoul could understand now why Christine was so enthralled. After the music lesson, Christine left the cemetery on his way. On his own way out, however, Raoul was attacked by the specter with a death's hand barely escaped with his life. Shortly after this incident, the Phantom made a demand to the opera managers that Christine Day replace the prima donna Carloida, Carlotta in the production of Faust. He threatened to curse the theater if this demand was not met. Unfortunately, for all concern, con concerned, the managers decided to refuse the request. Um, suspecting some kind of plot involving her rival, hardened her resolve to appear in the performance, even though she received a threatening letter from the opera ghost. During the performance, she suddenly lost her voice, emitting bizarre toad croaks, and then the curse became reality. The huge chandelier in the house plummeted, killing several persons and injuring many others. Christine Day disappeared for several days after the chandelier tragedy. Her sudden disappearance greatly distressed Raoul, and it was only after he received a note from Christine that he felt slightly relieved. The note asked that he meet her in secret at the masked ball. The two disguised lovers found each other at the ball and hiding from the mysterious figure costume as the Red Death. They proceeded to talk. Christine told Raoul that she must give him up 
and could not say any more about it. The forlorn Raoul then hid in Christine's dressing room and with his own eyes saw her disappear into the full-length mirror when the voice beckoned to her. A day or two later, Christine agreed to meet Raoul, but not in, the, in a public place. After dark, Raoul and Christine made their way to the roof of the opera house. There, Christine told an extraordinary story. She had been lured by the masked Eric into the depths of the catacombs to his hidden lair. Eric had performed his compositions for her, including bits of an opera called Don Juan Triumphant. The man professed his love for her and confessed the truth of the angel of music ruse. But in a fortuitous moment, Christine managed to unmask the fan to reveal a face of indescribable horror. At first, Eric threatened to kill her, but he soon sank in despair and sorrow and again insisted that his love for her was timeless. Eric's vulnerability actually made, moved Christine to great pity. At this point, Christine made a deal with the Phantom. If he would let her go, she would return often and of her own free will. As a token of her sincerity, she accepted a gold ring from Eric, which meant that she belonged only to him. As Christine told the story to Earl, little did she know that Eric himself was perched upon the statue of Apollo on the room of the opera, listening to her every word. The next night during the performance, Christine vanished on stage in front of a packed house, knowing that the Phantom must have used trickery to abduct her. Raoul frantically rushed backstage to find the entrance to the catacombs. There, he came upon an individual known as the Persian, a man. This man was a member of the secret police and had been keeping track of Eric's movements since his days in Persia. In fact, the Persian helped in the ploy to get Eric out of the country. So this is stuff we didn't read before. <laughs> the Persian persuaded Raoul to follow him and obey his every instruction, lest they both be killed by the Phantom's cunning. Eric had already proven his ability with the lasso. All right. Raoul and the Persian made their way into the catacombs and finally to Eric's lair, where they inadvertently found themselves trapped in the torture room. The room was designed such that the extreme heat would eventually kill the helpless victims inside, but on, a brink of, on the brink of death, the Persian found a secret way out of the room, and the men made their way to a chamber full of gunpowder. The phantom's intent became clear. If Christine didn't marry him, he would blow up the opera house. Okay. Meanwhile, the phantom had locked Christine um, in her bedroom and given her a choice. She could be his bride and stay with him forever and also spare the lives of the two men, or she could refuse and lose her lover and be responsible for a great tragedy. She chose the former. Then, in an extraordinary act of bravery, compassion, and sheer intuition, Christine managed to persuade the Phantom to let them all go free. She did this by kissing him. She kissed him full on the mouth, something no other woman had ever done before. Touched to the depth of his heart, Eric became human once again. He realized that he had been a monster. And he realized that the ultimate assertion of his love for Christine would not let her go free. And so he did. Christine's full parting with Eric was to return the gold ring he had given her. She asked him to wear it always and remember her. Raoul and Christine disappeared together after they were free. Some speculate they went to Scandinavia, where they lived happily ever after. The Persian stayed in Paris and died an old man. As for Eric, the Phantom of the Opera, no one is entirely sure what happened. How he met his death is unknown. It is said that after Christine fled with Raoul, Eric died of loneliness and solitude in the depths of the catacombs. A skeleton unearthed in 1899 was believed to be that of the Phantom. A few artifacts were found, which were thought to be, have belonged to him. These were placed in the Opera House Library for safekeeping. We're going to have to check those out. But no one has proven that the Phantom of the Opera did in fact die. Perhaps the spirit lives on, hoping that one day Christine would return to him in another form in another time. Which I think is what we're dealing with right now. I do not believe that the world has heard the last of Eric, the Phantom of the Opera. Okay. Where's my game? Here it is. I don't know if we need to search this room. There's there's a lot of stuff to look at in here. Let's look in let's look in the trash. 
Trash is always... It's got a perfumey smell. Let's look at the umbrella. Let's take it. Let's see if we can take it. You attempt to take the umbrella, but quickly deduce that this action would be a waste of your valuable time and energy. Dressing screen, poster, review. Let's look at the review. You marvel at the propensity for which actors and actresses paste up newspaper reviews. Costume rack, shelf, more reviews, dressing table. Okay. I think we're going to leave here. This isn't who we we're supposed to be talking to anyway. What what company made this? Microprose made this. This is a Microprose game. Sorry, I didn't get back to you earlier, Lars. They, they have the same company behind Rex Nebular made this. The door to the dressing room is closed and locked. No one is inside. I guess we're going to go go higher, go up the stairs more. No, oh, this, this is the last floor. Man. Ooh, it's a plant. Let's look at it. Looks, it looks kind of like a, looks like kind of like a Christmas tree. Now that you know this is the stars dressing room corridor, it raises, it rates a nice plant for decoration. A fire axe. Let's take it. Only for emergencies. Well, I guess we're not going to take it then. Who's in this dressing room? Is this Christine's dressing room? Probably. We, we haven't... Here's the mirror. Here's the interesting full-length mirror that is supposedly... Uh, so I'm glad I read that, actually. Let's look at this notice, because it, it, it tells me about this room. Actors often paste up copies of newspaper reviews in their dressing room. This one cites particular praise for Christine Flore's latest performance. Okay, let's talk to her. Christine, I, am, I assume. Bonjour, who are you? Bonjour, I am Raoul Monton of the Surete. I am Christine Florent. I'm glad you are here. Please sit down. I think that I will sit down. Why are you glad I am Why here? Why are you glad I am here? Because I believe I am in danger. I've been afraid to mention it to anyone until tonight. And why exactly do why you Why do think? you think you are in danger? It's somehow connected with a chandelier falling tonight. What do you mean by until tonight? You have a kind face, monsieur. I sense that I can trust you. That's how they get you. Can you tell me anything about the chandelier falling? Yes, I suppose I must speak up now. I've been afraid to mention anything until this happened. I believe it is all because of me that those poor people were killed. Why do you think it is all because of you? Because the Opera Ghost has returned to seek his revenge. But why me? I do not know. Ah! Boogeyman! The Opera Ghost? What do you know about him? Only that his name was Eric, and he was a talented composer and architect. Some say he possessed some black magic abilities, but who knows? Black you probably magic. think I might be crazy, but I believe in him. He 
speaks to me in my dreams. Actually, it's the same dream over and over. Well, let's hear about Tell that. Tell me about your dreams. There is a mysterious man dressed formally in a cape. He's standing in the shadows with a mist surrounding him. He beckons to me. He has a seductive quality that I cannot resist. I go to him, but his face is in shadow. And what else? What else go happens on. in the dream? He, well, he makes love to me. At first it is passionate and pleasurable. But then, I always begin to feel trapped. And I struggle to get away. I reach up to move his face into the light, but he won't let me. And then what happens? What does he do then? My attempt to see him angers him, and he wraps a thin rope around my neck. He... he starts to strangle me. Just as I start to black out, I wake up. It's very frightening. That sounds... that sounds pretty frightening. What makes you think he's after you? Because I received a note from him. A note, you say? What does the note say? That he is seeking his revenge on me for leaving him to die alone or something like that. I don't know what he means. Do you still have it? Do you still have this note? Yes. If you want it, you can have it. It's there in my dressing gown. Have you ever seen him when you were awake? Never. Only in the dream. But little Julie Geary has claimed to have seen him. She describes him just as he appears in the dream. Okay. So that's it. That's it. That explains that she turned pale when uh, hearing about him. That explains that. That explains the uh, line of, uh, of... That explains that line there. Have you ever heard of Christine Day? Yes, I know the story of the Phantom. No one knows what happened to Christine Day and her lover, Raoul de Chagny. Supposedly, they disappeared together. I don't blame them. I... I have heard stories that I resemble her. And you're not related to her. You are not related to her, are you? Frankly, I do not know. My grandmother was orphaned, so I'm unsure of my lineage prior to her. There is only one curious clue. How convenient that. She doesn't actually know her, her, her history. And what is that clue? That she was born in Scandinavia. And that was where Christine Day was from. And to where it is speculated that she and Raoul de Chagny fled. Okay. All right. I'll take a look at that note, if you don't mind. Please do. Beware. I have returned to seek my revenge against you for leaving me to die in loneliness and solitude. Not even your lover can save you this time. Oh. Gee. Opera ghost? Adieu, Mademoiselle Florent. I must leave now. Wait, monsieur. Do not leave me, please. I am frightened. I must continue my investigation. I must continue my investigation. I see. But promise me that you will return, all right? I feel like we have known each other before. Somewhere. This is getting kind of creepy. Christine, Raul, Christine, Raul, we're Raul, she's Christine. And I don't know. I, th I think, I think, I think, 
I think this story is going to play out differently than what we think it's going to. Is my guess. I promise to return. Merci, monsieur. I look forward to seeing you again. Adieu. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to talk to you again at some point, for sure. Let's, let's look at the mirror, because the mirror is is in the story. The full-length mirror appears to be permanently fixed to the wall. Okay, let's uh, pull it. Let's pull the mirror. Uh, you quickly realize that pulling the mirror will not accomplish anything concrete. Let's push it. I think I want to fire axe it. I want to fire axe it, but I don't think I can do it yet. Let's take the plant. You attempt to take the plant, but quickly deduce that this action would be a waste of your valuable time and energy. That's what it says whenever we want to take something, that it would be a waste of our time and energy. Okay, let's check that let's check out this this door. We still haven't found the one person that we were told to, to talk to. Okay, it's locked, closed and locked. Okay. I think we were just supposed to go the other way on stage, probably. Um, and we went this way instead of the other way. Yeah, it is a micropose point and click. Um, same company as Rex Nebular, which I really like. I, I like Rex Nebular a lot, so. I wasn't sure what I was going to feel about it when I started playing it, but I, I actually really liked it. I don't know if we can die in this game. I guess we'll find out at some point. Yeah, I know, right? I, I, I will, I will agree with that. His stair climbing posture is not, is not fantastic. Okay, so this we go behind the stage, and then we can come over here. And there's a staircase that goes up, but we're gonna go this way. We can't double click to run. I'm used to double clicking to run. Okay, what have we got over here? Oh, here's I think the person we wanted to talk to. This is the person we were told we should talk to. Yes, what is it? Are you Charles? Are you Charles? Yes, I am Charles. All right, he seems like a pompous butthole. Please, tell me about your job here at the theater. I am the stage manager. Since you obviously do not know what that is, I shall tell you. Quite literally, the stage manager runs the show once rehearsals have ended and the show opened. A show belongs to the director only until opening night, at which time I am in charge. Please. Continue describing your job. <laughs> From my command station here, I stay in constant communication with virtually everyone in the theater. I make sure the show runs smoothly and without a hitch. I follow the script as it goes and call all of the sound and lighting cues. And although it's not in my official job description, I handle certain personnel problems when they arise. What sort of personnel problems? I make sure everyone is here on time, for one thing. I take care of personality clashes between stars. I make sure everyone is happy. Please tell me a little about the Opera House. Yes, please tell me about the Opera House. The Opera House was designed by Charles Garnier and first commissioned during the reign of Emperor Napoleon III. Construction began in 1854 with demolition of the old. Listen to this guy. He's like a tourist. Site. He's like a tour and guide. It wasn't until 1861 that the first foundation stone was laid. The opera did not officially open until 1875. Go on, please. The history is. Go on, fascinating. please. This history is fascinating. The work was halted in 1870 with the onset of the Franco-Prussian War. 
Napoleon III was exiled and the Commune of Paris took control of the city. The opera was taken over by the Communards as an arsenal and warehouse and military prison. A prison? Many prisoners were incarcerated and tortured deep in the catacombs below the opera. By 1872, the Communards were defeated and the new government was installed. Three years later, the Opera House was completed and staged its first performance. Very interesting. How big is this building? That's a good question. It covers nearly three acres. It is 17 stories high, seven of which are below street level. The stage itself is 175 feet wide and 85 feet deep. Electric lighting replaced the auditorium gasoliers in 1881. It is a magnificent building. Okay. Tell me more about the catacombs. Yes, please. The water level on the site was bad. There is a lake deep beneath the stage area. It's now basically a sewer. Ever since the commune was in control and the area was used as a prison, there seems to be a perpetual chill that no amount of modern electric lighting is able to dispel. Some folks believe the area down there to be haunted. How do I get down there? You can't. It was sealed off long ago. If there is a way down there, then it's through some secret passage we don't know about. By the way, I am Detective Raoul Montal. <laughs> I'm now introducing Surete. myself. What of it? Can you tell me anything about tonight's mishap? Everyone was in the appropriate positions. There was no one in the fly loft or catwalks. All the lighting is controlled from the booth. I cannot imagine how it could have happened. How was the chandelier attached? How was the chandelier attached? There is an alcove in the ceiling through which the chandelier's electrical wires and harness are rigged. You must go to the fly loft and traverse the catwalks above the ceiling to get there. The chandelier is periodically pulled up into the alcove for maintenance. Okay. Any suspects? Do you have any suspects regarding tonight's mishap? Well, I don't, but some of the ballet girls certainly oh, do. the opera ghost. What do you mean? What do you mean? The ballet girls know something? They believe it's the opera ghost, you see. One ballerina in particular is spreading rumors. Opera ghost? Do you mean the phantom of the opera? Yes, isn't it silly? They are saying it's the Phantom's ghost returned to seek revenge on those who did him wrong a hundred years ago. Have you seen a man in a cape recently? Have you seen a man with a cape recently? No, I have not seen anyone since everyone went home an hour ago. Who is this ballerina? I've already I spoken her? to her, but... Her name is Julie Geary. I believe she is still here, probably in her dressing room. I have not seen her leave tonight. Some of the cast stay all hours at the theater. Who else might be here? As soon as I finish what I'm doing, I'm going home. You might find Christine Florent in her dressing room. Florent. She is so dedicated to her art that she never leaves. Goodbye for now, and thank you, sir. You're welcome. Now I can finish writing down these sound cues so I can get out of here and go home. Goodbye, sir. I don't think any of this is important. So we've got a note. Oh. Um, I guess we can't, I guess we can't use, I guess we can't ask him about it. I kind of wanted to ask him about this yellow frame, but. 
We can't do that, apparently. Okay, that's fine. Okay, we're back here. So we've talked to the people. I don't think we can do much about that. Um, let's go back down the trapdoor and see if we can go and find those um, artifacts that they found. If we could, like, increase our move speed a little bit. So we want to go this way. Is it a scroll? Or can we not go this way? Oh, it does scroll. Okay. Ooh. Look at all these doors. There's lots of doors. Let's see where this goes. So the placard reads tonight, Christine Flora, starring in the world premiere of the legendary 1881 score Don Juan Triumphant by Eric the Phantom of the Opera. Okay. What's this but who's this bust of? Oh, the designer of the of the of the opera house. Does this does this room scroll? Does not. Okay. So there's nobody at the ticket windows. Not too surprisingly. We can go in these various doors. I don't know where these go. I guess we'll find out. Okay, it goes here to Monsieur Brie. Here's a random door. Let's see where it goes. Ooh. Oh, here's the glass case that probably contains those artifacts. Let's look at that glass case. Yeah, same same here. They did they did they did do some point and clips, and I never clip point and clicks, and I never tried them. It it was pretty much if I had to if I had to choose between a game to get, I would always pretty much choose the Sierra game. And they made Sierra made a lot, so that's why I never tried any of these. The glass case has been smashed open. Whatever valuable objects it once contained are now missing. Someone obviously broke into this case during this chandelier confusion. Oh, so the artifacts have been stolen. Interesting. Okay, well that is that is something. So I guess we can't we can't look at the artifacts because they've been stolen. Okay. All right, we're gonna talk to you again. Ah, Monsieur Montan, tell me what you've learned. Um, the Phantom has communicated with us by writing. There's been another crime there in the been library. Another crime in the library. What do you mean? Apparently, during the chaos tonight, you had a Apparently, burglary. Apparently, during the chaos tonight, you had a burglary. What? In the library? Oh no, we we were also preoccupied with the chandelier mishap that no one noticed. The artifacts are missing. No, they're priceless. But who would have wanted them? They're of no use, really, to anyone but the Phantom. I hope that book written by Judy Geary's great-grandmother is still in the library. 
If you haven't found it yet, please get it and take a look at it. It might be helpful to you. <laughs> he, oh, that's the second person that says read the damn book that came with the game. The Phantom has communicated to us by writing. Oh? Really? The Phantom, eh? Well, let's see what you have. Well, anyone can write a note and sign it OG. It seems that this opera ghost of yours does exist. Bree raises his eyebrows at your statement, but then you shrug your shoulders, indicating that you're only half serious. Oh, come now, Raoul. You've been listening to too many rumors. I am not sure they are rumors. What do you mean by that, Raoul? Earlier, I saw a man with a cape and a mask. Earlier, I saw a man with a cape and a mask. My dear Raoul, I have only to quote my late friend Samuel Beckett, the playwright. All men are born mad. Some remain so. <laughs> Perhaps you should go home and rest. You and Charles sound alike. Well, he doesn't believe these rumors either. We're both sane, rational men. I have more investigating to do. Adieu, Monsieur Brie. Adieu, Roll. Please return when you've learned more and we'll talk. I hope that book written by Judy Geary's great-grandmother is still in the library. If you haven't found it yet, please get it and take a look at it. It might be helpful to you. Uh, wow, that's that's number three. That's the third time they told me to read that book. I guess I, guess I should, maybe I should find it. There are literally thousands of books in here. It's even more impressive than some public libraries you've been in. Do I actually have to find a particular book in here? Like... Is, is, that, is that actually important? Or are they just trying to say, read the damn book that came with the game? I really don't know. I don't know if we do. We've gotten three so far. Three unavoidable ones. I wasn't expecting them to say it so often, honestly. I haven't quite I haven't quite gotten to the point where we can create counters on the fly yet, but I'm getting there. Um, my goal is to allow my bot to just make counters like on the fly so we could make like a bunch of counters and put them down there. Yeah, maybe we should read instead. Oh, we found it. We found it. Wait, what? I don't want to take the bookcase. Maybe we need to open it? No. Um, okay. Take, push, open, put, give, pull, close, throw. Yeah, something like that. Put, open, push, pull. How do we take it? Double click. 
Double click. No. Okay. Oh, there it is. Okay. There it is. We just have to click book. You quickly thumb through the book about Eric and find it to be an interesting story. You are especially struck by the final paragraph. As for Eric, the Phantom of the Opera, no one is entirely sure what happened. How he met his death is unknown, and it is said that Christine Day fled to the withdrawal. Eric died of loneliness and solitude in the depths of the catacomb and skeleton on earth. And well, we, 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 we read this. But no one has proven he's in fact died. Perhaps his spirit lies on, hoping that one day Christine Day would return to him in another form, in another time. I do not believe that the world has heard the last of Eric, the Phantom of the Opera. Okay, we got the book now. We have the book. I just realized they had verbs over here for the items that we had as well. Um, this, I think, has a very similar interface to what uh, Rex Nebular had. Okay, now we have the book. We have the book now. Maybe we can go back to... Um... Let's tell him I have the book. Let's just talk to him and say, hey, I have the book. So stop, so stop bugging me about it. Ah, oh, you're back. I see you have Madame Geary's book now. I have been thinking about all of this, about what we're dealing with. Have you learned anything new? <laughs> I have more invest- As you roll, please return when you've learned more and we'll talk. Throw book at Bree. You quickly realize that you may need the book and decide not to throw it away. I didn't want to throw it away, I just wanted to throw it at him. But I guess that doesn't work. So we we also learned something about box five. I'm curious about box five. This doesn't actually, oh, this is like a, a lounge area. The door is open. Oh, this is a library, okay. This is just another way into the library. You would like to have a yeet verb? That would be, that would be funny. Okay, we're upstairs now. Box five, here, there, there's a box five right there, okay. Well, let's say, let's do a save. We're gonna do a save. We haven't done a save yet. Um, uh, box five. That was box five. Okay, we saved it. Cool. Let's try box five. It's locked. What about box six? Is it locked? It is locked. They're all locked. Well, maybe they're not all locked, but those are locked. I feel like there's, it looks like there's, I don't know, this looks weird. I guess it's not though. What are you doing? Locked. These go down to the grand foyer and so do those, so. Apparently, all the boxes are locked. Okay, so we can't do anything with those. I think I think we might go back to um, Julie, I think is her name, and ask her about the book. Maybe.
I do wish we could double click and run. That is one thing I wish that we could do. Oh there's, oh, there's also these stairs. Let's go up the stairs. We haven't gone up the stairs yet. Let's check these out. That's one place we haven't actually been. Whoa. Sacre bleu. Someone called some Someone didn't call heads. Calling heads when you drop something is the first rule in the theater. Hmm, you think? There doesn't appear to be anyone up there. Is this an accident or something else? Let's look at the sandbag. It appears to be just an ordinary theater sandbag, but the rope attached to it looks like it was conspicuously cut. Sweet, merciful crap! Can we take it? We can. Yoink! Sandbag sandbags are commonly used in theaters as counterweights. This one is a heavy 10 pound bag and the rope attached to it looks conspicuously cut. Let's look for more sandbag. Uh, see if we're gonna get sandbagged anymore. Okay, we go up. Whoa. You suddenly get a creepy feeling that someone is watching you. So we can go down. This looks this looks dangerous. Oh, let's look at the let's look at the rope. I noticed that there's an awful lot of rope up here. Can we take some rope? Rope? This coil of hemp is too big and heavy. It's dirty, too. No, not dirty. Not dirty. Okay, what about this one? It's too big and heavy and dirty, too. A sandbag. Let's look at this sandbag. It's a standard 20-pound sandbag used in the theater world's over, which is weird because I have a 10-pound sand sandbag, so that seems like an odd... If it's standard 20 pound size, why why is mine 10? Let's push it. Okay. So it's not gonna accomplish anything, so we don't do it apparently. There is a bug flying around my head. And I do not like it. Oh, here's another one. Here's a, here's another um uh, thing. It's a blue. It's a blue one. Can we have a we have a blue one and a yellow one. Cool. So we can now make green. Ooh, this is where the chandelier was. There is a note on the chandelier. My dear Raoul, Yoink! it is time that we settle our differences. A hundred years is a long time to hold a grudge and the weight of it has become unbearable. Revenge is the sweetest of all music, and soon the Opera House shall be ringing with it! Oh, 
Okay. A piece of wood. Let's take that. Let's take a piece of wood. Oh, we can't take the piece of the wood. The piece of lumber looks as if it's been here for decades. Okay. We got duct work. That looks more like pipe work, but a crate. I don't want to take the, take this rope here. I said take it. Take it. Take it. It's too heavy and covered in grime. Okay. Here, the grid is actually the ceiling over the auditorium. Workers in the theater step out onto the grid to open the chandelier trap when they want to pull up the huge chandelier for periodic maintenance and cleaning. Okay. Climb through hole. All right. I'll, 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 I'll do that. This seems like an awful idea, but I'm going to do it anyway. Okay. It was an awful idea. And it didn't let us do it. You would fall to your death, Raul. The rope is cut. Okay. Other stuff in here that it doesn't look like we can do. Okay, we can go back to the catwalk. Or we can go this way. We have an exit this way as well. This is not the way we came from. Oh, jeez, I thought we found a note, but that's our note in our inventory. Okay, let's keep going. Probably scrolls. The screen probably scrolls. Or it doesn't. Or this is a dead end. Let's look at this. Let's look at this rope. I'm sure there's a lot of rope in this place. Yeah, no crap. So there's nothing over here yet. There's nothing over here yet. There's a lot of grid work and duct work, but otherwise there's nothing really over here. Well, I thought I saw something in the uh, grid work and duct work. I thought I saw something right there, but oh, it's just not, it's just more rope. Okay. So I guess that we're done here. I guess, I guess we're done here. I guess maybe we have to bring the other note to the guy and say, look, I found another note. And it was on the chandelier. Oh yeah, not to mention that someone I think may have tried to kill me. Not quite sure if a sandbag to your face would kill you, but it would definitely hurt. It definitely would not be pleasant. He's still here. He is still here. Oh yeah, we were going to talk to that one person about the book. I think I still want to do that before we go back. Because we got the book. So I think I think we want to go back to her and ask her about the book. I really wish we could... I really, really wish we could move faster. There's also headphones here, or a headset. And I'm very curious about that too. Something we can't use.
I'm gonna go up the stairs. Lucky us. Okay, into the door to the um, not stars dressing room area. She is still there's paper here. I didn't see that. We should re we should look at that. Yeah, it's I think I think that's the I think part of it is the MT32 sound that we're using. And yeah, it's very good. Let's see if we have anything else we can say to her after getting the book. Back again so soon? I believe I've told you all I have to say, monsieur. Good luck in getting to the bottom all right. of all of this. Have I guess you. that would be a no. Yeah, a lot of games of this period supported like MT32 sounds, so um, it's just not many people had, it's, it's surprisingly, not many people had an MT32 sound um, device because they were so expensive. Um, but, you know. It's like getting a, it's I mean, I feel like it's in the same realm as getting a super high end graphics card to play games, you know. People people don't do it. Unless you really, really want to experience the game for everything that is that it that it is. So I know I didn't. Although I did have a Pro Audio Spectrum, and the Pro Audio Spectrum was a pretty good card. It did it did it did it did some good music. <laughs> but that was after the MIDI standard became the MIDI the MIDI standard was a thing. So um MT32 existed before the MIDI the MIDI the general MIDI standard uh, started existing. So um I have more to talk to you about. back learned anything new i found a note addressed to me i found a note addressed to me really this is extraordinary hmm let me think about this a bit i too have a note from the opera ghost i thought it was a sick joke at first but now well here it is on the desk take it i suppose i should have said something notified the authorities the tragedy might have been prevented i feel terrible you do not have my permission to perform my don juan triumphant cease the production immediately or i shall cause thee a great deal of stress it 
seems that this opera ghost of yours does exist. Oh, come now, Raul. You've been listening to too many rumors. Falling sandbags are not Falling rumors. Falling sandbags are not rumors. What? Did you have an accident? I think someone tried to kill me. Oh dear. My insurance premium is really going to go up now. Well, thank goodness you're all right. <laughs> well, to, what do you have well, to say about all this? What do you have to say about all this? Perhaps there is more to this than I thought. Do you really think this could be the work of the original Phantom of the Opera? Has Eric really returned? No, impossible. No, impossible. You are probably right, but still, the evidence is quite compelling. And then we're going to say it seems like we're dealing with the supernatural. It seems to me we're dealing with the supernatural. Well, if one believes in that sort of thing, do you? No. I am a realist. Well, that's probably a good thing. But all of this does give me the creeps. Well, Raul, it sounds as if you've done an excellent job with investigating this case. It seems that all evidence points to the existence of something or someone trying to make us believe that he is the real phantom of the opera. I say we should... You hear a woman scream in the distance. What was that? Who was that? You now recognize it to be Julie Gert. How? How? Really? I, I don't know if I'd be able to recognize somebody's scream. Oh, wait. I would recognize the actual voice Quickly, then. Go to Christine's dressing room. Find out what happened. I'm on it. Five minutes later. Oh, I don't actually have to go there. I'm on it. I am on it. The fire axe. I'm, I, I, I. She's dead. I saw him, monsieur. The phantom. He was wearing his mask this time. Great I was backstage and he came running out of the stage right stairwell. He ran up the circular staircase towards the fly loft. Hurry! He's probably still there! Wait. Where did he go? The stage right stairwell. He ran up the circular hair staircase. Oh, okay. And yet, I can't run in this game. We're gonna save it right now. Just in case. Murder. Okay. I like how I'm just walking. Hurry! Hurry! That no, 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 we're just gonna casually walk. Casually walking down the stairs. Watching each and every step as we thump on it. Do, 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 do. I mean, that would be, that would be somewhat ironic if, like, after all of this, it's like... You do all of this and then there, somebody put somebody put like a little car on one of the stairs as you're running down them and you trip and fall down the stairs and, and, and die. I'm back. I'm not gonna find anything. There's a secret passage probably over here somewhere. Oh, wait, wait. 
Never mind. I did find something. Ah! 